Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this tutorial, this is going to be a series of tutorials of me going over the essential plugins, actually called essentials. Um, in this first one, I'm going to be going over Group Manager, which is the base permissions plugin that Essentials provides to you. Now there are a lot of options when it comes to um, permission plugins, such as PEX permissions, uh, PEX, uh, there's Bucket permissions, B permissions, and Group Manager. And there's a couple others, but I don't really know them. Group Manager is probably my favorite one. A lot of people say it's old and stuff like that, but it's generally easy to config and it's a lot easier because the user's YML and the group YML is separated, making it easier so if you have a lot of people on the server, people are getting promoted frequently, you can take the group's YML out knowing that all the user ranks will be saved. So, uh, you install like you do any other pro plugin, it's the Essentials Group Bridge and the Essentials Group Manager. The Group Bridge is what allows it to connect to B permissions, so this plugin has both permissions support and the built-in bucket API permission support, so it supports all permission-based plugins. Um, so you just put those two in the Essentials Group Bridge and the Group Manager, and then you run your server. And it should say that the group manager has been loaded and there should not be any errors to start out. Then you're going to want to stop your server, let it save the chunks and do its thing. Go into plugins, go into group manager, and this is where everything is. So first we have the config. Now here is the basic stuff. Um, op overrides true, that means if somebody is opt on the server, they have all the permissions and it doesn't matter what the permissions are for what group they're in. If they're op, they can do whatever they want. Now, bucket permissions override, you're going to want to keep that as false. Um, this allows you to make it so that if you're using the default bucket permissions, which is this file right here, it's blank because it sucks. Now, um, this is, uh, this will, I'm not exactly sure what this option is, but I think it makes it so if you type like the first three letters of somebody's username, it tries to match th them up with other people on the server, and something general like that. You're going to want to keep that as true, though. Now, this is a backup. Backups go in the backup folder. I'm not sure if it created one, and it did. So this just makes a backup of your groups and uh, users' files, just in case if you mess up or screw something up, you can use a backup. This is just how much minutes you want it to create a file. For example, I'd say 60 and it would create one every hour. And then um, number of hours to retain backups. So you might want to put that as 24 hours. Logging info, you can have it log elsewhere, but I recommend just keeping it as info. Now, miners, worlds, this is very important. For an example, let's say you have a world named Earth and a world named World. Now, anything that the world inherits, inherits is the permissions that it will get. So, for example, it's set up right now so that if you are in the nether and the end, um, I'll go in here, under the worlds, you see just world. That is because that if you're in the nether, you inherit your permissions from the world. And if you're in the end, you inherit your permissions from that. So, let's just say I take off the nether. I save this and then I run the server. It's going to create a new world folder so the nether permissions are completely separate so now I can stop the server and if I go into plugins and group manager worlds you are going to see that the nether is by itself. So that could be good for a number of things. For example, let's just say in the world you wanted your users to be able to have god mode. Now this is just an example Let's say you want them to be able to have God Mode in this world, but you do not want people to have God Mode in the Nether. You would just set different permissions for those worlds, and everything would be good to go. Now, if you have, if you want it to be simple, you can just go into Config and re-add the Nether, going all the way back, going forward, slash World underscore Nether, and then everything would be back to normal. So, that is the basic config. You could have different worlds inheriting different worlds. It's not that hard to understand if you have a good look at it and play around with it a little. So that's the basic config. Next is global groups. Now this is what um, you have. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. You could have, well I recommend not moving this around. This is just the 
things that people get by default with the essentials plugin. You have essentials underscore admin and stuff like that. So I will talk about that in a sec and I'll just copy something so I could use it as reference just like that. Okay, and actually you'll see it when I edit the uh, worlds in here. So I'm going to go into worlds and world. Now this is the permissions for that world. And I'm going to go into groups. Now here you're going to see some groups already made. You have default, builder, moderator, admin, and owner. Now I'm not going to change the name. Actually I will. For example, let's just say you wanted to... Ah. Okay, I'm tr getting ahead of myself here. Let's say you wanted to change a group name. All you would do is change this to something like, for example, guest. And now this group is guest, but you're going to want to fix the inheritance. Currently, the default group, which is this group, is inherited from... Well, it doesn't inherit anything except for the basic stuff from here, which I'll show you real quick. Um, right now, the default group is inheriting the essentials default and the bucket default. And the essentials default is commands like... Um, help, list, message of the day, rules, spawn, and basic things like that. Now, personally in my server I do not use these. I just keep this like this so that doesn't inherit anything. And then I give this permissions manually. So I can give this the permission essentials dot spawn. And that would allow people to use the forward slash spawn command. But back to inheriting, um, right now the builder is taking commands from guest, moderator is taking commands from builder, admin is taking commands from moderator, and owner is taking commands from admin. Now this works under the inheritance. Currently the guest group is not inheriting any groups because I have it set like that. But the builder group is inheriting default, but I've changed the name of the default group to guest. So I'm going to want to copy that and put it under inheritance for builder. Now the builder inheritance is going to be inheriting the guest commands. So let's just say I'm going to give every uh, group a node real quick. So some of these might be made up too, just to warn you. Essentials dot back. Let's just see how I'll give that group. Now you're going to want to be really careful with formatting this. Um, when you do it, if you use tab at all, it won't work. You're going to need to use spaces. So you're going to have to space all the way up and then add the node you want. Essentials dot ban admin. Actually, I need to clear those. Go back, enter back. And I'm going to give this essentials dot kill. And then the owner will keep that node. So right now, to give you a brief overview of inheritance, right now, guest, the only thing it has is the spawn command. Builder has the back command, but in inheritance, the guest group, so it also has spawn and back. The moderator inheritance builder, the builder inheritance guests, and that's inherit anything, so the moderator currently has ban, back, and spawn. Now, I'm not going to get into all of these, but that is basically how it works. So you just give the groups all the permissions you want to give them. Um, you could change the inheritance as you want and uh, go advanced with it. Now prefix and suffixes are just for things like chat. You can get external external chat plugins and configure it with those, but I'm not going to get it much into that. So that's the base overview of the groups. Um, so if a plugin you have comes with permission nodes, you can just put those in here just as this is. So I can save that, close it, and show you the last thing which is the users. Now by default it has a couple people which I think are the creators of this. You can, um, you're going to want to set yourself. So my Minecraft username is Brandon Hopkins and the group that I would want to be is owner. So that's how you do that. You can give people permissions just by themselves. So let's just say I wanted to be the only one to allow that should be able to use game mode. So I just go essentials.game mode. Now even though none of the groups have it, I would be able to use the forward slash game mode command, which is cool. Yeah. 
that's basically I use that. There's nothing really to it. Um, when you when people come in, if they're in the default group, it doesn't put them. But if they're promoted to a group other than default, then they have permission here. And I'm going to show you that real quick before I end the video. Um, default true. You're going to want to have this the default true only to one group because if you have default true to two groups, it will mess it up so builder false, moderator false, default true to one group. And um, you're going to want to set your build, which is in between the prefix and suffix, to true. Unless if you obviously do not want your guests to build. And it's as simple as that. That is a basic overview of how to configure the group manager plugin. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I know a good amount of this plugin that I would be able to answer. Uh, make sure you don't have any other permission plugins that could be conflicting with it if there's any errors. Um, have a good day. Please subscribe. All that good stuff. And goodbye.